My name is Raymond Bennett, and this presentation is on the impact of parenting on neural wiring. Parenting is a complex traditional practice that has been going on since the beginning of mankind, and parenting involves two things. It involves both the experience of a parent being parented and whatever experiences they have from that time combined with whatever the parent learns through trial and error with their own offspring to create a parenting style which the parent deems to be best fit for the survival of their child. Now, in humans, parenting experience predicts parenting execution, and this was found in a study done in 2017, where especially in mothers, the type of parenting experience determines the type of parenting that is done to children of an individual parent. And with parenting, there are certain myths. So due to the long history of parenting and the existence of humans, there are myths that have been carried on through the years that are now actually debunked by current neuroscience research and other research that involves understanding human behavior. And certain myths are that kids always need to be happy. And has been found that kids actually do benefit from having boundaries and what they have access to. Um, kids need, kids don't have to be told yes all the time. They can be told no, they do have the capacity to handle that. And that kids' needs always need to go first. These are three different myths that have been shown to not necessarily be the case and can actually be harmful to the raising of children. So in early childhood and in the toddler range of childhood, the impact of parenting can be pretty deterministic, actually. So... A study done by Reuben Burgess and Hastings in 2003 looked at the interaction of mothering and social inhibition, and it actually found that harsh parenting can lead to a high level of social inhibition in toddlers and early childhood children when they interact with other peers. And another study done by Volker and all in 2009 found that genetics, such as the gene expression for a particular protein, can combine with the environment to affect attention in children. And the way that children are parented and the experiences and stimuli that they're exposed to can actually impact expression of this gene, which can thereby impact their attention. And a study recently done by Brooker and Buss in 2014 found that harsh parenting and fearfulness can also interact with each other and that harsh parenting can lead to high levels of fearfulness in children. And these <clears throat> findings can carry forward into later parts of childhood and even later parts of life. However, research in that realm is being done currently and is following on the tales of these studies that have been done in the past. There is also an impact on late childhood and adolescence of parenting. So in early childhood, the impact of parenting is a bit more direct as far as the synapses and um, the different parts of the brain that are growing and shrinking according to synaptic pruning that goes on. But in late childhood and adolescence, um, parenting begins to have a less discernible impact on the brain. There are two studies, Luby and all in 2012 and Raul and all in 2010, among many other studies that actually find differing impacts of positing, positive parenting on the brain. Positive parenting seems to either decrease or increase the gray matter in certain parts of the brain depending on the study and the conditions of a study. And in all of these studies, different reasonings and different 
ideas are proposed to explain such findings of either a growing or shrinking of the hypothalamus, for example, or the hippocampus, or different cortexes like the anterior cingulate cortex. All of these different main areas show signs of either growing or shrinking in various studies. And in the study done by Whittle and all in 2014, this study actually deals directly with the anterior cingulate cortex and the orbitofrontal cortex where they found a thinning in these brain structures as an impact of parenting. And in that study specifically, they proposed that self-control may be involved in the thinning of those areas as different sizes of different areas of the brain have been shown to be correlated with certain behavioral tendencies. However, most of these studies are correlational and it is hard because of the variables involved with individuals in late childhood and adolescence. It is hard to determine what exact impact parenting alone has on these different brain structures. So what does this mean? Well, toddlers and children in their early childhood, they need positivity and optimism. Um, they need to be told that they can do things and they need a healthy self-image. They also need realistic parenting. They need to be told yes and no and to understand that situations don't always have to go their way. And they also need encouragement and risk-taking because, as mentioned before, children that have either <clears throat> children that have harsh parenting or that have fearful parenting can actually take those traits from their parents onto themselves and they can become fearful, anxious, and socially inhibited, among other things. And then in late childhood and adolescence, positive parenting is strongly recommended. And although it is hard to elucidate what exactly the impact of the positive parenting is on the brain itself. There is definitely a correlation between positive parenting and positive behavior in late childhood and adolescence. So all in all, despite what parenting tradition may suggest, neurobiology says that there are certain things that need to be offered to children both early on in life and later on in life in order to ensure that they grow in the best and healthiest way for both themselves and the people around them.